Christmas and I'm bored. Let me see what's on TV. So all I get to do is smell show, it? Show the folks can, out there, okay? Can we, can we? Just show them. Oh, oh, oh my smell God, this. That so Isn't that wonderful? Oh. Well, it says here, Halloween's on. I ain't telling you to be Michael Myers. I'm playing Michael Myers. Merry Christmas, the December review. Oh, Santa, is that you? Where's your suit? Well, this channel doesn't have exactly the highest budget. I mean, take a look at that green screen you're sitting in front of. Fair enough. I heard you weren't in the Christmas spirit this year, so you will be visited by three movies to get your spirits up. Hmm, this should go well. Oh, Santa, while you're here, for Christmas this year, I would really like a Red Rider BB gun. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. It's an icicle that fell from the roof. Hmm. Going for a new amateur recreational saucer sled land speed record, Clark W. Griswold Jr. 1989 brought us the third entry of... 1989 brought us the third entry in the National Lampoon series featuring the Griswold family. First, they went to Wally World, then to Europe. And here, the dysfunctional group stays home for the holidays in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. You know the story. Chevy Chase plays Clark Griswold, the bumbling but good-natured head of the household who can't seem to catch a break. Sure, it's usually his fault, but therein lies the comedy in this classic franchise. The madness starts early as the family heads out into the woods to pick up their Christmas tree. From there, it's time to decorate the house and settle in the visiting family. With annoyed neighbor looking on and an unexpected arrival of Cousin Eddie, things go from bad to worse for Clark. And things eventually come to a head as he's awarded a Jelly of the Month Club membership in lieu of a bonus before things eventually settle down into the true spirit of the season. There are a long list of reasons that make Christmas Vacation work so well not only as a holiday staple, but just as an all-around great comedy. It all starts with the excellent script by the legendary John Hughes. Let's take a look at a few of the films John has helped write or direct. Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club, Weird Science, Pretty in Pink, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Some Kind of Wonderful, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, The Great Outdoors, Uncle Buck, Home Alone, Career Opportunities, Dutch, Beethoven, Home Alone 2, Home Alone 3, National Lampoon's Vacation, European Vacation, and Flubber. Alright, well, I'll give you that last one. But as you can see, that's an incredible Hall of Fame career that warrants all the praise it receives. One of John's strengths is being able to take something familiar and have it translate to the screen. That relatable nature helped drive the success. And of course, there is the cast. Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Juliette Lewis, and Brian Galecki round out our hosts. And of course, Randy Quaid steals the show as the down-and-out cousin Eddie. That thing had nine lives. She just spent them all. <laughs> Woo! For as many crazy scenarios Clark finds himself in, the film has heart, which is why National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation continues to be a holiday mainstay, 32 years since it was released. Hmm, wonder what's next. Yes, the caller is in the house. The calls are coming from the house. Black Christmas arrived in 1974 and stars Olivia Hussey, Margot Kidder, and John Saxton. The story follows a sorority house whose members start receiving odd phone calls during the holiday. Soon, a few of the members start disappearing as the calls increase. The police are notified and it's revealed that the calls have been coming from inside the house. Can our protagonist put an end to the madness before it's too late? On the surface, the plot for Black Christmas would seem superficial in this day and age. It's your better than average holiday ghost story with some notable names involved. But digging deeper into the slasher genre history, Black Christmas stands out for not only its chilling scenes, but also for helping create horror movies as we know them today. If you've watched any slasher horror film in the last 40 years, its roots will be firmly planted in this film. 
The genre's footsteps can be traced back all the way to 1960 with Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Then in 74, we have the outstanding original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Once John Carpenter's Halloween arrived in 78, the movie world exploded with a new, usually low-budgeted, mask madman film every weekend. And this isn't a coincidence. John Carpenter and Black Christmas director Bob Clark were in touch during pre-production on Halloween. It was clearly an inspiration allowing John to create his movie, which in turn changed the landscape for horror films for good. Bob Clark is also famous for another Christmas film you may recall, as he co-wrote and directed none other than the classic Christmas story. It's pretty impressive to be behind two very different yet hugely influential films based on the same holiday. One helped inspire multiple franchises and the other gets played on its own channel back to back to back for days every year. Black Christmas would go on to have two reboots over the years in 2006 and 2019. Both films attempted to expand on the story involving a deeper backstory behind its antagonist. While it's difficult to recapture the look and feel of the early 70s, both films are pretty good in my book, and solid and interesting takes on the original. Yeah, Nash, what is it? A phone company's on the other line, sir. They say they got a trace on this one. Yeah, let's have it. He says the calls are coming from number six, Belmont Street. Nash, you got it wrong. That's where the calls are going into. That's where they're coming from, too, sir. Ah. Okay. Should be the last one. You are looking at a guy who told someone today to staple antlers to a mouse's head. The 1988 film Scrooge stars Bill Murray as Frank Cross, the mean-spirited television executive whose obsession with his career has alienated himself to those around him, and of course the holiday spirit. He is visited by three ghosts who take him to the past, present, and future to give him a glimpse into the world. He of course learns a few things along the way and has a change of heart basking in the glow of the holidays. This reimagining of the classic Charles Dickens tale, A Christmas Carol, was a big hit in theaters and has managed to become appointment viewing every December. The film takes a modernized look at its subject matter, which feels as resonating today as it did back in the late 80s. Of course, the story itself is timeless, allowing viewers to take a step back and reassess themselves to see what truly matters at points in their lives. The film takes on a host of different topics, including the oversaturated branding of the holidays as a moneymaker. It oftentimes is cynical and mean, but with Bill Murray as our lead, it's able to stay mostly above its own doom and gloom, managing to walk the tightrope between reflective and bleak. The film's production was seemingly a difficult one. The direction of the film seemed to have wavered between its director, lead, and writer, resulting in some less than favorable conditions to work in, and has left a lasting disdain for some involved, which somehow is ironic considering the story's overall message. But the end result is a film that fans enjoy, and by the time the film is over, you may want to start randomly singing any Lennox songs. It's the one night of the year when we all act a little nicer, we, we, we smile a little easier, we, 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 we cheer a little more. For a couple of hours out of the whole year, we are the people that we always hoped we would be. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great holiday. We wish you